Hi, I'm Christina. Um, I'm a visual artist and I am a storyteller, I guess. I, I tell stories and they're usually about um, more of the marginalised narratives that you find in the in the worlds that we live in, because I think there's many worlds that we occupy, um, that you move through, that you walk through, that you embody. Um, and I'm able to tell these stories um, because as much as I can, in every context they go to where they're lived where those communities are where those places are where those fears are because a lot of the time a lot of the marginalized narratives that i may engage with that i may investigate are ones that my initial reaction when i thought possibly working in that community or in that environment i've had a kind of you know shortness of breath or a kind of like oh i don't know if that's a good idea and if i feel that i'm like well why, why do you feel that? Why are you acting that way? Is, there, is it rational? Because if it's irrational, then that's something that says something about you, and potentially your prejudices, or you know, one of one of your one of my perceptions of the world that it seems may be quite narrow and therefore needs to be broadened. So those are the kind of those are the kind of stories I go for. The ones that. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> make me rather uncomfortable to be honest um but fascinate me that you know with with the with the fear there's a thrill of excitement because oh wow you know i'm interested and attracted to that for a reason if even if there is a um a slight cautiousness to to go into that place or understanding where that comes from um but for me as well these this storytelling or I guess my practice it's more than just like it's more than just encountering communities and and places it's to me to me it's it's a way of understanding the world I, I live in and understanding where it's where its futures may go how they may develop how I may conceive of them because when we think of those futures it seems so like wide and broad and you're just like whoa you know when people talk about especially with things of like climate change and stuff it's just like these massive kind of global futures and you're just like christ where do i fit in with that so i kind of scale things down into the story into a person into a protagonist into a community and what's happening within that or and and me within that situation because i can tell those stories because then because essentially you know you go in there and you share who you are as those people are sharing with you and it's a it's a it's a co-production in many ways when you when you create these narratives but i can only tell the story from my side because that's the one that i live so that's the one that i share with you um but you know i always also find that that this practice is what i also think of as a graphic medicine as well so when i've gone to when i've gone to places and communities i share my practice and what i do because i think art is an amazing way to kind of measure and guide and inform and mitigate your well-being your mental health it helps you deal with like exceptionally prolific and heartbreaking things that might have happened in your life as well as things just like well, christ how do i manage change where do you want to go it helps you to envision who you want to be and what you see for yourself or what you see for your family so for me it's 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 a wider my practice is of a wider endeavor than just the image or the object or the sculpture or you know the the lifetime of a project or the community or where you are for that time it's kind of overarching kind of novel of curiosity and engagement and adventure uh, and i love those adventures they're the best um i mean i don't know if we call this time an adventure but it's something that is extraordinarily may mean extraordinarily introspective and actually the reason why I'm doing this and trying to talk about myself because I'm not very good at it is because you know in recent interviews that I've had my brain just just completely just collapses in on itself it just went completely blank and there's just white noise in there and I can't even talk about who I am and I you know and I'm like why 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 does that happen so I want to talk to you and I'm trying to talk to you about who I am, what I do, if it's of any interest to you, and I'm always welcome to anyone getting in, in contact with me and wanting to talk with me about about the you know about their practice, about their work, about subjects that they may find interesting. So, a little bit of background on some of the projects I do or the stories that I've made is or are. So, one story that I've that I worked on for about a year was with a charity called Women at the Well. 
which is a women's charity supporting um, women exiting prostitution and trafficking and substance misuse. And I was a resident artist with them for a year. And over that time, we ran art projects with um, with the ladies, and they would say, you know, they would inform where those projects went, what they were. So, for example, one of the projects that we did was to create, was to sorry, to honour the the um, hundred years of women having the vote and the suffragist movement. So, they were talking about some of the suffragettes being in prison and how they'd learnt about them during their um, during their stays. Um, and how they wanted to make a similar blanket as they made so we had they had a really great art room so we made like um squares and then each person could decorate that square how they wanted and in the end um we also had um sorry pieces from the nuns there as well because the the charity was founded by the sisters of mercy who were exceptionally dedicated loving caring kind women with extraordinary stories i mean the things that they're seeing the places that they worked over the last god 30 to 40 years you know it was just astonishing like one lady was telling me how you know she'd been in south africa working you know educating kids during apartheid and she was there when Nelson mandela came out it was just all these extraordinary stories from all these women across the board really and it was an exceptional place to volunteer with at that time and i hope one in the future I have the opportunity to go back there again but if you're at all interested do check them out they do astonishing work um um so yes and out of out of that i made four sculptures that were exhibited last year bringing together the core themes um that i took from from being there and listening to the stories of these women over this period of a year which i kept in journals of every description from audio um i'd you know i'd feel myself talking trying to capture the emotion of what i was thinking i'd have visual journals and things i'd written journals um of during this time um and i think you know what i do think that's some of the best work i've made actually it it, it hit home a lot and i i entwined those stories of those women and the different things that had happened making sure they weren't identified in any way with my own stories and my own say trauma and achievements really so that was a fascinating time very difficult time as well personally but it was a fascinating time and great people to work with second another story i've worked on which i'm just finishing off now is predation and that was um based on working with indigenous um communities in the peruvian amazon in the, in the north of peru and it was initially based on a book i have because i like to i like to um, collect antique books and it was based on this big beast this big beast by jw ball in 1988 1988 1887 excuse me um and it's got just all these kind of you know hundreds of of travelogues and accounts and um drawings of the races of man and you know creatures that you think had never existed before and as well as hunting and different things but they talked to, within this book about the amazonians um uh you know which you know we think of as well, related to the name but it was a story that touched so many different parts of the world actually and then linking that back to the Peruvian Amazon and and going from there as a starting point really and that leads into what I'm finishing off now as a publication which is a contemporary travelogue of my time and I was there so we did the, the residency was about a month long and then I I then traveled after that um with my husband actually um in Peru documenting that so that's that publication there but it just changed everything it changed everything seeing that it was the first time i think i've probably lived within a community where um i'd say i close to it i've ever seen of a symbiotic relationship with nature living it the way it was used the way in which if you take from the forest you have to get back in various ways that they did that from you know sustainable kind of indigenous practices knowledge systems the way in which you know knowledge had just been maintained and stored through stories and just the legacies of it and also how that was changing because they're a contemporary society and it was just fascinating and it's changed my entire practice because before as with the queens of the cross story when i was working with the ladies um i was very community focused i was fascinated by the stories of people and specifically in places and the factors that affect them and now I think I'm looking at 
communities in a different way like the overall ecology of where they fit into it what are communities looking at nature as a community looking at nature as part of my community here where i live in south london you know it's 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 part of where it's one of the best parts about where i live because we have an extraordinary amount of land extraordinary amount of land here and the beddington farmlands which is being turned into and it will be one of the biggest um, nature conservation areas in London and it's, it's extraordinary and barely anyone knows about it from, from what I can gather. Um, it's just amazing how stories and engaging with people can change your entire worldview and I think growing up um, between Barbados and the UK you know you I always had more than one worldview because I you're within two cultures here in the UK so I have a strong you know Caribbean community that I grew up in grew up within and then you have you know you have British culture overall and then you know traveling to the Caribbean being there with your family and as places develop and change as your family stories develop and change in these places you know you know what poverty and affluence looks like in different places of the world and it just informed everything and now it's just changed my entire context and going forward I want to dedicate what I'm doing now to engage and infiltrate and understand what's happening with the climate movement, what's happening with climate change as a narrative and where marginalised and underrepresented peoples come within that. So from indigenous people, people of colour, black, brown, whatever, whatever anyone wants to self-identify as, where these stories come in within these movements, how we're going to get there, what our futures look like, you know, in a very kind of personal way, you know, I, I have a four year old son and I want, you know, and I want to do the best I can to provide the best future, the best world for him. So what can I do with the skill set I have? And that's what I'm choosing to to dedicate myself to now is a much more ecologically engaged practice. That's what I'm researching and working on and, and developing. And I want to start looking at that within my own community first. So, um, and beyond that, I, I would love, an ambition would be, I would love where I could make work that actively contributes to, propagates, supports biodiversity you know we have you know here and all over the world we have spaces that have been cleared that's brown land that possibly could be you know that's de polluted deforested so on and so forth so to use art in in the protest in the process to repopulate these places um with nature um and to protect them as well from being you know from future destruction is, is is something that I'm I'm really fascinated by I would like to you know that that agency that action of of directly addressing the problem not just philosophically or you know visually interrogating it which is absolutely valid and, and just so much to educate and create dialogue and an understanding or, or questions and critiques you know so yeah I just I just wanted you to see me. I'm not very good at being seen. <laughs> I'm someone that I kind of like to be behind the behind the curtain, you know, and then you just see the work maybe or 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 what I see. But I just wanted to talk a little bit of who I am and where I'm coming from and I'm also thinking more of being open about, you know, things like, you know, if I can if I can support other artists more in what I do, I I volunteer for an organisation called the Black Curriculum, which, um, as an educator, which teaches um, young um, black children and young people, you know, altern the alternative histories that you have in the natural curriculum. So those were basically black historical historical figures um, about their culture, how it feeds into our, you know, to our national story, our British national story. And, you know, we've made all kinds of amazing like resources and, you know, working on... Um, digital resources resources for those they can access at home because not everyone can get on the internet or has laptops and so on so i'm you know i i always try to contribute to my community in some way through my practice and and as an individual really i was always brought up you know in terms you know volunteering your time of supporting your community um as best you can um so i'm i'm always welcome anyone who wants to get in contact who wants to talk who wants to chat um i don't know that you know that maybe you know, also you're trying to be more seen maybe like i'm like i'm trying to do and um yeah i i hope you take care and 
I'm always fascinated and interested in the stories of others. And I have a lot to share myself. So it'd never be just a one-sided conversation. <laughs> okay? So I hope you have a good day. Um, good week. Good month. Mm -hmm. That your family is safe and well and so are you.